Well, I think the feature that uh, 2021 will be known for is a combination of extreme restrictions on supply and very high demand across a whole range of sectors, but in particular across residential of all types. So that would include bill to rent, um, include social and affordable housing, include investors looking at a whole range of development opportunities, longer term kind of forward fund opportunities as well. So there's a lot of competition for any opportunity um, across a range of sectors, but in particular across residential. So that demand coupled with constrained supply has really made it a very, very competitive market for our, for all of our clients. Um, and, and that includes um, issues around planning constraints in terms of delays caused by planning objections, judicial reviews have been a major feature. And also just because of lockdowns, that construction has been halted several times. So this is just causing an increasing backlog in terms of supply. The government's response to that restriction in terms of supply and the demand issues has been several um, interventions. There's the housing for all policy um, that has come through and also a multitude actually of legislative uh, changes, which you know, that brings with it a lot of challenges for clients in terms of interpreting that new information. And that's something that we've really mobilised to, to get that information out to clients as quickly as possible and to interpret it for them so they can uh, bring it to bear on their own plans for the year ahead. When we look back across 2021, I think, you know, we will we we'll remember it for many reasons. But I think we opened the year um, in the real estate team by closing out on a major transaction, the acquisition of the Trinity Care Group. So I think in terms of the large loan sale transactions, what is very interesting about them is that you're working very closely with financial advisors to your clients. You're trying to envisage at all times what your buyer market is looking at. Um, it's a very competitive market, so you're always looking at how can you help your client m minimise the risk of a transaction failing or aborting at any point, because that can be so damaging, you know, in terms of perception of those assets in the marketplace. So we we have a system whereby we process all of the data that is relevant, we think, to the buyers. Um, and we test that data and, and present it in a way that is very easy for buyers to consume it and then price in the risk that they're perceiving in these types of assets as to what, what the level of performance or underperformance might be in those kind of assets. And that all goes to pricing. The themes that we would see in 2022 continuing probably from 2021 would be an increased uh, demand supply issue. And increasingly, I think people are now looking at development opportunities because the, the actual supply isn't there in terms of assets on the ground ready to go. So we're seeing an uptick in office development, an uptick in energy development, also um, our nursing home and kind of healthcare clients, where they, whereas they had been buying consolidated packages of assets, are now looking at development opportunities across a whole range of areas. Um, development in all areas of residential is going to continue and we're going to see more development in social and affordable. And I think, you know, aligned with those development aspects and those development opportunities, we're going to see more forward funding um, funding opportunities. Um, and that's, I think, going to be one of the major features for 2022. Allied with that, there's also the increasing move towards green buildings, green leasing and, uh, and all things related to ESG. So I think they're going to be major features for 2022 and into the future.